Excellent. Be, like we get some good stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Great. Great. So you're coming at me from, uh, this looks like the living room in, uh, you guys are in Utah for the last several years now, right? Yeah, the last eight years we've been here. We love it. It's the most beautiful state with seven national parks. And, um, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, the skiing was shut down this year, but uh, so kind of restricted to you just walking up the mountain and, uh, and, right. <laughs> which is a lot of work, but fun. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Utah's great. Well, I, I grew up in Western Colorado, so I'm real familiar with the, uh, you know, the hot, the Rocky Mountain high country and the, you know, the Alpine and the high desert and all that. And yeah, it's just, it's exhilarating. And you, you guys are avid skiers, I know. So that's, that puts you right, right in the heart of the action. Utah's always had the reputation of some of the best snow in the world. So yeah uh we're just on the other side of the rockies and um uh you know skiing mountain biking you know uh, ice climbing like all kinds of crazy stuff going on and of course dancing yeah that's consciously great. yeah <laughs> well it's good that you can get stuff going on there in salt lake city i mean it's you know my my impression of salt lake and growing up in colorado and traveling through there a lot was that you know it, it it's got like this overarching umbrella of you know the the conservative mormonism and all that sort of stuff but at the same time it's got a really strong thriving uh a lot of energy and a lot of heart in the uh what we used to call it the underground world but just you know now i guess it would be you know the dance community and everything else so i i can imagine you've got a good thing going on there especially once you can get back together in person yeah, it's it's booming, and of course we got shut down, uh, and uh, that's kind of why we're having this conversation. Is like the the transition from right being able to be face to face and in close proximity and having a normal life versus this life that we're recreating mainly via technology, uh, which uh, you know I have to say. Um, like the internet was uh, kind of a cool thing before. Yeah. Now is uh, an essential thing for all of us. Yep. And um, I can't imagine the people that, that, you know, didn't have a, you know, even a computer. I mean, you, at this point you have to have a computer. Yep. And um, that's a, that's a big change. Yeah, it sure is. And uh, yeah, of course I'd love to, you know, that's kind of why we're talking, but uh, you know, How's that been going for you? And uh, what, are, what are you finding in, in this whole journey? Because I, I agree, it was, it was sort of like, oh yeah, maybe I'll do a Zoom meeting, whatever, you know, but now it's, it's a utility that like, you know, it's a lifeline, we've all got to have it. Right, well, who the hell ever heard of Zoom before all of this? <laughs> I, I know I was one of the early adopters, you know, I'd been, I'd been being like, yeah, use Zoom, not Skype for the past couple of years. But then, you know, boom, suddenly everybody's on Zoom because it's, you know, it's the best way to do a, a interactive kind of meeting with, you know, multiple people or something. So, and uh, that's been great for us Five Rhythms teachers around the world. You know, we have close to 700 teachers uh, globally. Wow. And, and um, uh, within the medium of, of conscious dance, uh, you know, everything just completely shut down. Right. So, so many of, of my people's livelihoods was just uh, stopped short in, in a day. Yep. And, um, and then, you know, slowly but surely, uh, people started to um, figure out that they could use technology and continue their spiritual practice, or, you know, for us, for many of us, mm -hmm. you know, uh, five rhythms is our spiritual practice sure um, not to sound culty or anything but uh, <laughs> you know we like we like to energetically work it out every week at least once a week yeah and, and we have communities all across the world and we're all used to meeting and so so teachers have found a way for us to meet without the the danger and uh 
Uh, it is platforms like Zoom that have been the capabilities for that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, for me, because I'm uh, kind of the figurehead of the five rhythms, uh, I, I'm doing everything globally. And that means um, doing everything legally. Right. And so music licensing is a big deal. And um, I, I grew up in a family with its own r recording label, Raven right. Record, mm -hmm. and uh, Robert Ansel and Gabrielle Robin Mears and, and many other artists uh, that, that they have produced. And uh, so, you know, taking care of these people uh, always is in my mind and uh, I, I, you know, in the age of the internet and this kind of, we went through a period of, of being able to steal music and basically killed the music industry um, to, a, to a certain extent. Uh, like these guys have been working so hard and, and build, building themselves up to be able to be listened to globally. And then suddenly uh, nobody had to pay. Yeah. And so um, that's like uh, sticking a knife in your neck uh, if you happen to be, you know, Metallica or, you know, one of these new, uh, newer pop stars. Um, so I don't believe in, in stealing the music or transmitting the music without the artist getting paid. Mm -hmm. So as of now, um, you know, we have all of our licensing and we give 25% of our profits uh, back to the artist which um, I think everybody should do. Yeah, that's great. And how? Tell, just drill into that a little more. I'm curious now, are you going like through ASCAP or BMI or are you doing like direct, like a, a direct cut of the revenue? I mean, I'm just curious how, how that like plays out because I, I fully understand what you're talking about and, and really appreciate that you're, uh, you know, putting the artist first. Yeah, uh, Mar Morgan's murmuring in the background, which I, with the details of your question, but <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna invite her in for sure. a second. Hi Mark. Hi Morgan. <laughs> welcome welcome to the welcome to the call. Yeah. Hi. Oh, I'll, I'll leave you, but I'll and you got a dog there too. Well, bring him on. So the dog. Every time I start talking to someone on Zoom, he barks. <laughs> Levi. Shh. Anyway, so we've been doing two things so one you'll notice that when we first started the live stream we were very specific about being country specific like right. a lot of people complain that like jonathan's classes and that are only in the u.s and not in like europe and everywhere else right um, right so that is because we're paying sound exchange which is the streaming piece okay you know, like a radio license essentially and you have to report levi <laughs> You, have to you, you can bring Levi him. in if you want. Maybe that'll quiet him down if he wants to sit there on Here, camera. Levi, come say hi. Show them your scar. He's got a rattlesnake bite scar Ooh. on his nose. He got wow. Into a Ow. About two oh, weeks. hi, Levi. Hi, buddy. Ooh, okay. Hey, Levi. Oh, he's so cute. And he got bit by a rattlesnake. Right there, there. That's where the fang went in his nose. Ow. Ooh. Really but he's good now. Do you okay. want to talk about music licensing? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so you're using something called Sound Exchange, and is yeah. that US only? Or I mean, this yeah, is. That's US only. And the problem is, is that each country has their own organization that does that. So it's really impossible. Like, it's a bit surprising that the music industry hasn't come up with a way to sort of globally stream really right, easily. The internet's global. So. Yeah. But what you know, speaking to some labels and some, I actually, we have, we hired a consultant that's like in the music industry to help. Yeah. And he said the reason they don't do that is because they want to be able to charge what they want for certain artists. And the second you go into a system, you're, you're basically aligning the Taylor Swift's with the indie artist. Right. And Taylor wants to like be able to charge when more because she can. Yeah. You know, and I don't necessarily disagree with that, truthfully. Um, but that's why it's not really like universally priced out. Right. Um, but like sound exchange is like the actual fee that you pay per stream is actually really tiny. It's just a matter of doing the paperwork and the recording and all that stuff. Because mm -hmm. that, that, 
once you're in the US, it's the broadcasting piece, it's a statutory rate. It's not, it's, you know, that specific piece. But the second you go worldwide, you're basically needing sync licenses, master licenses to just be able to use a song however you want, wherever you want. Wow. So long story short, so we've started that on New York, the New York stuff. And for the international stuff, we've only used Raven Recording because we have just a direct deal with Robert for the 25% right. to just pay artists. We've slowly and steadily built, been going literally artist to artist, like basically taking Jonathan's list of songs that he loves to play, like his top 5,000, I would say. Right, and just reaching right out to the artist and saying, let's reaching make a deal. Right out, reaching yeah. right out. We've so far managed to do, I think it's about 2,500 tracks as of yesterday. Wow. So we've actually done it. It's possible, and the artist's super receptive to the 25% deal because it's way more than they would get if they did go through just like all the basic Sure, and then they can just they can just individually, personally authorize, basically give yeah. you the okay, the stamp of approval. Yeah, you're basically yeah. you're asking for like a master use license to sync. You you have to like give them an exact platform. So it doesn't really work if you're using just Zoom because they want to be able to check at any time where and what mm -hmm. you're using. Right. Unfortunately, Zoom is a bit too in the moment, and it's not like a set link half the time. So right. it's interesting that they they're like if you go to a label, like we've we've partnered with a couple of indie labels now, and they won't like if you say, "Oh, I'm just doing this on Zoom," they won't accept the deal. So right. So you guys, uh, like for instance, if you're doing a class, Jonathan, and you're doing it online, you're not using Zoom now. You're using like something else that can be. No, we've never used Zoom. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have Zoom. Well, we have a Zoom room open, but it's not where the music is streamed. So people can go in a Zoom room if they want personal connection. It's optional. Oh, I see. Uh huh. But they're not. We're not. The actual music and guidance is streamed through our website. Which brings oh, us okay. to another thing, yeah. which okay. is. I'm gonna go. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Morgan. <laughs> you know. Uh, my my beautiful mother Gabrielle Roth, uh, you know, created this uh, moving meditation called the Five Rhythms, and you know, obviously the vision was would be to disconnect from technology and get into your body and uh, in a in a meditation practice. So this is really trying to find a bridge here uh, is. Uh, it's interesting, and um, I mean, like I love broadcasting and uh, send, sending, um, uh, you know, the practice out to the world, sure, and so that they can practice at home. Um, and at the same time, you know, you kind of via Zoom um, get to see how people. Can, it's so hard for them to actually get off of their their screen, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and we all, having been in isolation, want to see each other. So so you know, I try and uh, discourage the the while it's happening, you know, watching. But at at the end, have like kind of a little video conference where we can like be with each other and say hello mm -hmm. and, and give each other love and and uh, and uh, that's that's really nice. But but uh, you definitely can see the the dilemma for people like like it's almost like there's a rubber band from mm. somebody's neck to the to the screen of their computer <laughs> but uh what i am really proud of is that the way that morgan has set up our streaming is the highest sound quality that i've heard uh, in the world so far Great. and uh, we've gotten a lot of good comments and, and good feedback on the difference between just like a, trying to do a Zoom class and and what we're offering, mm -hmm. so so I'm I'm quite proud of that. I mean, if you were to plug into your stereo system at home, I mean, you, you, there would be virtually no difference between being in a live class, mm -hmm. you know, with with eighty people and uh, and a teacher and what what we're offering. And um, of course, you know, you come up against this whole, um, well, it's not real and, you know, it's not the same. And well, no, and nothing's ever going to be the same. But when you, when you look at it technically, Mark, um, like 
uh, I like to dance at home. We have a beautiful little dance studio, yoga studio downstairs, and we're lucky in that way to have that space. And I like to, you know, just dance. I'm, and so that means requires me to to make the music and put together and then push play. And uh, really, the difference between that and and um, and me and streaming something live is. is is very little. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm grateful that I actually get to continue teaching, and and that would be a major difference as well. Is that I, I, you know, people can receive the the teachings and and the practice. Uh, it's not just playing the music. Sure. And, um, so you know, I I think that people are getting a lot from that, and in a time where it's really needed, you know. Uh, Oh, it's been a stressful time for, you know, no doubt. Uh, some people try and do this for free, but, you know, uh, you know, we all have uh, mortgages to pay and car payments and groceries to buy. And um, I feel pretty good about what, what it is that we're offering. In fact, I feel very good and, and very mm -hmm. confident. And since we have hundreds and hundreds of people tuning in every time that we stream, um, yeah, it's going well. That's great. So you're streaming live on the website and then what's the, um, uh, you know, you're talking about monetizing it. So it, it's, how does that work? Do people get like a, uh, do they sign up and pay a fee and then get like a passcode to log in or is it like a member exactly. site or how, how did that they, exactly they, they pay for a class or a class series yeah you can do it individually um mm -hmm. uh so so the day of um, right if you just want to join in for for one time or you can do a monthly mm -hmm. and a weekly yeah so, <laughs> right so we have daily Weekly, weekly monthly. monthly, right, right. Obviously, the monthly, you know, you th there's a lot that you get that you would never get if you just paid for one class or paid for a week pass. Sure. I just want to one one thing that we're also doing is uh, yeah. everything is on demand after for 30 days, and we've actually oh. noticed because I can our broadcasting software like gives me a lot of analytics and statistics. Mm -hmm. And we actually get a lot of people that are dancing when it's convenient for them because work, kids, life, sure. you know. Um, and I was actually pretty surprised by that. I thought it would be more in the moment, but it's, I would say, I, I would actually say it's more people doing it on demand later. Which well, is and it kind of makes sense too because of time zones. You know, if you're broadcasting at seven at night yeah. in Salt Lake City, uh, you know, that might be two in the morning in France or something, you know, or whatever. So being able to time shift it like that is great. Yeah. Anyway, I'll leave you again. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's really um, sweet that that people just have access and uh, kind of on demand. Uh, they have the space opens up suddenly um, to, mm -hmm. to dance. And um, generally our, our we're putting out about an hour and a half at a time. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, our thought around that is, um, you know, generally we would do a two hour class and like when, when things were what they were before this whole sure. pandemic, we do two hours, but if you're dancing by yourself or yeah. just with one other person, it's, uh, you, you don't have that group energy mm -hmm. feeding you, pushing you. Um, although sometimes we do do two hours and it's just up to the participant. Right. Yeah, well, that's, that's great. I mean, one of the things, you know, I've talked to a lot of different teachers and, you know, just as this whole thing kind of like, you know, everybody's, the rug pulled out from under everybody at the same time, more or less. And especially the first month or so, everybody was scrambling and like, what do we do? How do we do this? How do I set up, you know, my streaming and all this stuff? And, and you know, just getting a lot of feedback and, and commentary from people that are making this shift. Um, and one of the silver linings, I guess you could say, is that you're able to reach people that wouldn't be able to come to your class. So, you know, people exactly. that 
you know, and, and a lot of people, even if they're maybe 20 minutes away and could come to your class, there's people that just never leave the house. And suddenly they're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm actually able to do this. You know, I was, I was never able to get up off the couch and out of my driveway before, but I guess I'll try this. So there's sort of this uh, glimmer of hope where people are reaching across a lot more lines geographically and even just sort of culturally and socially uh, to get people to connect and, and do that. So, you yeah. know, that's, that's a, a little bit of an upside that's kind of interesting. It's that, very- that one, when it, when it actually uh, dripped into my brain, um, I got really excited because it wasn't just about this pandemic and this time, like actually, when I think about it, you know, there's much more of the world that doesn't have the five rhythms than does, even though we're in hundreds of countries and have sure. teachers all around the world. There, you know, the, and when you're traveling, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, you have to do a business trip to Hong Kong and you leave your local community, but you still want to, you still right. want to get your dance on and, and that do, it doesn't matter where if it's your hotel room or whatever. Mm-hmm. I hope um, that uh, whatever it is that you're doing, because you have a huge platform that you really are encouraging people uh, not to just be listening to these streams on their computer, but plugging into some kind of, you know, a, a, a speaker that will give you, you know, a, a good, you oh, know, yeah good experience and i I try to tell people that and that's actually a good thing to underline and point out and i'm going to kind of remember that and highlight it in my future communications because that is so true Uh, i mean and i'm used to doing it i listen to some streams that my dj friends do and stuff and i have a usb from my computer directly into my stereo mixer so you know their sound is coming straight through my big speakers full full spectrum full you know as much as you can get through a, a thing so yeah when people are trying to use their little laptop speakers or something it's it's like no please don't <laughs> you know yeah, exactly. like there's, exactly. there's more don't, there you know <laughs> don't don't do that to yourself i mean uh but also this speaks to you know the conscious dance part where mm-hmm. okay i'm really trying to 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 have a meeting with myself in in uh via movement yeah uh, whether, whether it's the five rhythms or anything else sure and um if 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 you're just listening to the speakers on your computer then that means that you are much more likely to be kind of engaging in in the yep. screen exactly which you lose you lose the the real thing right that rubber ra- that rubber band around the neck metaphor you used comes to mind again <laughs> people are kind of like stuck to the screen <laughs> so i do that hope was. that you um you know tune in to like a tuesday you know i do my new york tuesday night um high vibration wave um and so you're broadcasting that at the same time as your class was in new york right yeah yeah so people that are used to coming to that class in manhattan at that time can still you know have that experience at that time and just just as a quick uh uh little parentheses here uh you may not know this but the one time that I danced with Gabrielle, with your mom. Because yeah. we spoke a lot on the phone and I had dinner with her and Arthur a couple times. And like, we, we developed quite a relationship over the years, you know, when I was launching Conscious Dancer and everything. But there was a time when we were in uh, Manhattan and uh, we were gonna go to your class. And it was like, oh yeah, it's the Tuesday night class. And John, great, we're gonna go to the class. But you weren't there. She was substituting. She was the substitute teacher. Then. <laughs> so we walk in and we're like, yeah, great. I mean, I miss Jonathan, but wow, cool. We get to dance with Gabrielle. And, uh, and what was really interesting was the way the class was structured. So um, when we arrived, uh, I forget, maybe it was Arthur. I don't know. There was somebody playing, you know, playlist out of a laptop. And it was just kind of warm up for maybe 45 minutes or something. And it was, you know, different music being played. And then that stopped and everybody sat down and she talked and gave a meditation and kind of a rap, you know, one of her signature kind of talks for everybody. Um, And then uh, two people uh, with drums, there was like uh, uh, two drummers. That was was probably Sangha and Robert. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Sangha and Robert. 
um, and they just belted away on the drums with no no laptop, no nothing. And it was just, you know, her talking a little bit and guiding and the drums. And it was like the most incredible class ever, the most incredible dance, you know. So when you're talking about uh, the, you know, needing music or not needing music or whatever, you know, I just, I often flash back to that. And it's like, you know, some of the best dance experiences can just be a couple drummers and, and, and somebody hyping the room up, you know, so. <laughs> alive and real and I uh you know you're you have kind of tapped into one of the greatest privileges of being Jonathan Haran <laughs> uh, which is my father's last name but I, I am Gabriel Roth's son sure and uh, I started this at you know very young I did my first uh seven day workshop at seven years old uh wow. with live drumming that whole time and um, but to be able to 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 ask Gabrielle Roth to sub your class is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I have to say. What? Just curious. Somebody was asking me yesterday, and I didn't quite know the answer to this question. What year, or you know, or what you know, what roughly what years? did uh she coined the term five rhythms and actually sort of shift it from like something in the back of her mind to like an actual like okay it's a practice maybe i'm going to train teachers let's get official with it like when okay well that, that's the, the these are very different questions okay but I'll, I'll answer them both you know it was um pretty much the early 70s where 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 the five rhythms part was coming together right because she, she was at esalen and it was sort of like like forming formulating as a as a as a thing at that point right yeah and uh, so uh, the five rhythms are today flowing staccato chaos lyrical and stillness yeah. back in the old old 70s days um it was strong and flowing okay staccato chaos light and lyrical and okay. then and then stillness came at a certain point, uh, which really naturally evolved um, just from uh, people in the workshop. Like when she danced that intensely through the first four, you know, people kind of, oh, they want right. to just you know, rest, rest in the med meditation part. And, um, and then uh, the second part of your question, um, I think that uh, it was around the late eighties when there was, um, she had, she'd been traveling the world and teaching so much and people started to ask about how, how could it be possible for them to teach? Right. And um, I'll never forget because she, she came and she asked me, um, and I, you know, I was just so young. I was like 18 or something and 19. And she, she asked me, um, do you want this just to be me and you, or do you want this to be bigger? And, um, it didn't take me any time at all to just say, Hey, I, you know, bring them on, you know, bring, yeah. bring other people in and that, that demand is there. And, and we could, this could be such a service, uh, in, in such a new way to the planet and and that was the turning point because the the moment that she actually started to to uh train teachers that um and people could do weekly practice uh mm -hmm. around the world mm -hmm. and um when that happened there was a, a an entire revolution uh and and um almost metaphysical transformation of the five rhythms because if you can imagine all right i get to dance you know 10 times a year with gabrielle yeah. and and that's that's my practice and i get her message and her transmission versus every week i'm mm -hmm. dancing so the rhythms themselves really changed and evolved uh, via via having teachers and mm -hmm having a weekly practice right and having it readily available especially like it just exploded in europe like over a 
over a five, 10 year period, I mean, it just absolutely was viral. And um, so people were doing workshops everywhere and they were doing classes everywhere. And, and so the, the, the practice itself, and that would be sort of, you know, the, the, the change from um, her first book, which is called Maps to Ecstasy, mm -hmm. Teachings of an Urban Shaman, to Sweat Your Prayers, which yeah. clearly defines that this is a practice that we that we practice, uh, uh, you know, daily or weekly or or monthly. I mean, it depends on your. Yeah, yeah, but that was definitely the you know you could see the difference in the books. Mm -hmm. Like she, she defined what it was in the first one, but then she def was kind of defining the, the evolution of what had happened globally in the second book. Yeah, well, and, you know, uh, oftentimes people talk about, you know, people talk to me about Gabrielle and the history of it all, and she's obviously a great pioneer and everything. And, you know, I like to point out, and she also <laughs> pioneered the idea of taking a body of work and taking a personal transmission, like you call it, and sort of codifying it and branding it and making a um, you know, distinct yeah. transferable kind of training program out of it. You know? So it's really, it's really cool. Yeah. And, and, it's, and what, what's amazing is that, uh, you know, she, she modeled and at, at the, you know, the highest level of quality, you know, uh, everything, anything that you could do in the conscious dance world started with her, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and she had a, a kind of a, uh, a mind for the fact that this was going to live beyond her. So yeah. the brand part, she played a, big part in because she you know especially aesthetically you know wanted a, a quality uh you know the quality of whatever was going to go out you know digitally to the world to be mm -hmm. the same as the quality of, of just being in esalen in 1972 you right. know hanging out with gabrielle and sweating your freaking ass off in huxley yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> With live drumming, you know. So, so nineteen albums later, three videos, three books. She did a really uh, amazing job at trying to make this bigger than herself, and um, not about her. Yeah. Um, but 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 about about the practice itself and um, all of the beautiful things that you can learn, but through conscious dance yeah well and she you know she did a great job and it's admirable and that's really the secret of making something um larger than yourself and branding something and you know there's uh at first she you know you've got something that's amazing and you want to teach it to people around you and then they start saying hey you know we want to teach this too so then you're like okay well maybe i'm going to train some teachers and then what's the way somebody explained it to me and i really like this and they said but then there's the third level and if you want to create a movement you've got to get to the third level and that's training people to be trainers so that you're not the only teacher trainer once you've got teacher trainers then it's like that third yeah. level and then you've actually got a movement and that's obviously where she got to you know as being uh, and I, I know you have a terminology for it, you know, well, more or less. I, I, I think that I, I have, I picked up that torch, uh, a little bit more than she did. She kept it pretty close to home and close to sure. heart, um, in, in her time. Um, I definitely have, uh, and have encouraged, um, many more of our resources and, and people in, into that process. Yeah. And, and you know, because I can see, well, you know, I only have a short time, and uh, if this is going to go go on with the the quality and integrity that that she had. Um, that you know, it. it uh, I I just have to say that you can't you can't mass produce these people. No, of course not. 
Um, this, you know, it's got to be a filter or a. I, I studied with her for my entire, you know, life. Uh, you know, forty years of being with her everywhere, doing everything, and um, that definitely gives me the qualifications and the credentials to to be able to to kind of set the next people up. But what I've learned is that that, that is not something that you could just like say, okay, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you how to do this over the next year. Right. No, this is a, this is a multi-decade type of thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to um, maintain your um, standards and integrity uh, 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 to the, to, to what she had done and was, um, yeah, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's not something that, um, you're going to know every yeah. person personally, every person. So, uh, without that, I think that, um, you know, you're, you're homogenizing and sort of watering down any possibility. And you can clearly see the difference between somebody who, uh you know studied for you know three years and did all did everything that they were supposed to do you know and, and then came to the training and really maybe that the only time they they spent with gabrielle was that that you know three module year and uh, you know that that's one one version and then there's the well i went everywhere and did everything and uh, for the last 40 years version. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, uh, I'm sure you probably see it all the time. People that start the training and then part way through or start kind of working on it. And then they kind of go, you know what, this maybe isn't really for me or, uh, you know, I've, I made it halfway up the mountain. I'm not going to climb all the way. And they just not, not really not so much, they find right, out they're right. not really meant for it, but. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't have any recollection of anybody ever leaving a training because of something like that. Mm. People are mm -hmm. so in love. Yeah. They are so with or without Gabrielle, with or without me, they are so in love with what, what how this has affected them, their life. And, and, and they have a vision of, of wanting to give that and pass that on. And um, so we don't, sure. I, I've never seen any dropouts. Uh, I, I, I have seen people that have decided that they just wanted to continue their education more than they actually wanted to offer it. Right. You know, right. I think that's more what I'm saying. But yeah. 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 So, so, you know, going to the training, of course, is going to be, a, a, you know, the, the sort of master's degree. Right. Uh, but, and yeah, there are people that, that, you know, they just want to continue on, but they don't necessarily have the inclination to be like you know a, a global teacher you know right. running around the world giving workshops and sure well and circling back to the whole uh you know virtual world we're in now in a way it might be opening things up for some of those people because not everybody's cut out to travel not everybody wants to be organizing workshops and you know dealing with a retreat center in costa rica but now it's like hey guess what? Let's have a class. I can do it, you know? And, uh, so, you know, this is, and that, that, that literally makes me so happy because, um, five rhythms teachers are so individual and quirky and have <laughs> such different life experience. And, and, and it's almost like it's a pity that, that, you know, some of these just incredibly diverse uh, inspired people like you know like i'm just thinking off the top of my head of like uh, some teachers in ireland that you know they've got you know their their 20 40 50 80 100 people that they stream through in a year mm -hmm. and that's the only people that get to to touch them and right but they but they're so freaking incredibly cool and 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 different than like a Jonathan right. Horan or a Gabrielle Roth or right I mean it's like a, a uh, we're all um, it, we're all in the in a world but there's different species yeah, yeah. and we can all learn 
so much and be so inspired because you know when you go to any kind of uh, group event like a let's just say a concert mm -hmm. you know you're gonna have the majority of people that love the music right, right. that's why they're there and then you're gonna have this a whole other collection of people that are just kind of checking it out and um, so for some of them it's gonna that that's what they're in and for some of them like, it's a clear no yeah um, but but then that that doesn't turn them off from music. It it's just that particular flavor wasn't their style, you know. And uh, I can honestly tell you that in, in the five rhythms, like the teachers are, uh, it's like going to Baskin Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> Far more you know, than thirty one flavors. Uh, like you yeah, said, you got seven hundred plus uh, trained teachers out there in the world, so. A lot of variety but it's a good metaphor you know when yeah. you walk into an ice cream shop you, you have to look through that window yeah and and, and taste and, and it's you look you know that you love ice cream or right. sorbet or whatever but but you just are selective in your flavor right yeah <laughs> exactly yeah well and uh you know it's 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 great to have that diversity and that variety and that uh, sort of multiplicity in ways of delivering and you know being able to share in different kinds of people's mojo so to speak totally so, so uh, on a closing note I just want to say um, yeah there's all kinds of zoom five rhythms classes uh, happening around the world and, and I I really hope that um, that that all of the teachers and I have, have have really guided all of the teachers to to take care of their music licensing. Yeah, I think it's a really important part of this conversation. That that you know we're not taking advantage of these artists and. Um, yeah. Do you have any like specific advice for teachers as far as licensing? I know you, you, um, Morgan mentioned uh, sound, so, sound sound stream, uh, but you I mean, have to do your your, re, your research. Um, you know, you have to Google given your region because it's so mm, different. Your, country, your country, mm -hmm. your you know your it's it basically comes down to country to country. Right. So um, if you're lucky, you know uh, you're in a a huge United States or Australia and like you can go to one place and get licensing mm -hmm. for a whole huge country. If you're unlucky and you're in um, Lithuania, um, well, that makes it tougher. Sure. But, but, um, but I, you know, I, I just want all of us to be respectful uh, of, of, of the artists that made the music that are, you know, putting, putting meals on your table. Mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. not putting meals on their table and you're putting meals on your table well then you're a taker you're not a giver sure i totally get it and i really like um i really want to underscore uh how you guys are working directly with the artists and reaching out to you know like she said 2500 different artists that are commonly your favorites on the playlist and making individual deals uh, because I can imagine how the artists really like that. And they're like, wow, this is, you know, this is cutting out the middleman. And if you guys are paying respect and uh, other facilitators want to kind of take on that approach and be like, well, let's just start with my top 10, you know, let's start with my top 50 and, and reach out, make the deals, uh, share the revenue and build yeah, a really uh, if you're integrity. Mick Jagger, you know, Mick Jagger's still sitting at home, just like the rest of us. Right. What, what do you think he's doing today? Right. Well, no, I, would, yeah. he, would he be way more open to getting a call from you today than he was three months ago? Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you never know what you can pull off. And um, it's just, it's just actually being, you know, it's, you, you are the, the founder of Conscious Dancer magazine and, and, and the platform. It's about being conscious. It's yeah. you know, you gotta you gotta break these things down. You gotta think about them. You have to be aware of them. You have to be aware of the fact that um, you don't want to be a, a a taker. You want to be a giver. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's always been the spirit for me putting this together. It's like how could I contribute to this movement in general, and how could I you know sort of take a meta position where it's sort of like I'm not in any one camp, but I'm 
here to help all of the different uh you know, facets on the disco ball, so to speak, grow. And, uh, you know, if you look, if you look at the, the, the disco ball of dance, there's a lot of different ways it shines, you know, and, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, especially the ones that are doing it from a place of heart with integrity with, uh, you know, the, the, the con con spirit of contribution in mind, you know, and uh, I'll never forget a conversation I had with Gabrielle and we were talking about she really liked the term conscious dance and conscious dancer. She thought that the name of the magazine really nailed it, you know, and she was like, yeah, don't, don't call five rhythms ecstatic dance. Cause there's two, there's all these other things going on. It's not just ecstasy, you know, and I'm like, totally, I totally get it. And, um, you know, yep. so, so seeing how all these things can grow and, um, you know, really, you know, respecting Gabrielle and your leadership in it all these years, um, and you, I really appreciate you guys, how you are uh, putting the musicians first and putting the uh, relationship with the musicians and, and you know, of course, because we've all seen it. You, you, musicians used to make a record and they would get X number of dollars per record sold and there was a physical artifact and, you know, they could count how many of those went out of the warehouse and that was the deal. And I saw so many of those same musicians, you know, sitting there going, Here, here's my royalty check from Spotify, another one for, you know, 0 0.3 cents to put on the wall. And it's you know, not I worth cashing at the bank for my, my thousand streams or whatever. So we've, we've all watched all this evolution happen. Um, it's, it's virtually nothing. And, and, you know, in some ways, um, this, situation that we're in maybe is sort of recreating the possibility for them to get an actual you know a gold record again or or something at least in their hands that that um you know makes them uh want to continue yeah well and the other thing you know the whole conscious dance field whether it's five rhythms or anything else i mean we're arm in arm with the music industry. It's like there is no conscious dance without the the world of musicians. You know, it's like it's it's joined at the hip. <laughs> you know, so it's like yeah. it, 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 we've got to. You know, it, 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 the the dance world's dance partner is the music industry. So it's it's worth like you know, you know being how to how to make this whole uh, two step work. You don't you, you don't see very many silent waves out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. It would be good, but um uh, yeah. You know, it, it, that's just not gonna kick off the kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh um you know, I know that Gabrielle would uh at this moment uh be you know, quite proud of the fact that there are not just the five rhythms, there are so many, even ecstatic dance, uh, uh, it's just, uh, is, is the doorway, is the bridge mm -hmm. to conscious, conscious dance. Like, exactly. To me, to me ecstatic dance, that, well, they, they took that from Gabrielle, but uh, what, they, <laughs> what they missed was the practice. And um, and 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 yet you have like the greatest DJs, uh, and you also have, you know, like it, it's such an amazing social event. It doesn't have a clear, you know, kind of conscious uh, intention, but 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 the fact that people get to move and socialize and dance and and um, and and they're not drinking. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. It's a, clearly it's defining sure. a whole new. Uh, way for for our our kids and future generations to to kind of break out of the old systems and the old sort of regime mm -hmm. uh, and it, and is somewhere in between like spiritual practice and um, and um, the dance medium conscious thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm proud of everybody. I really am. I'm I'm, I'm wh whatever end or spectrum or point that you have um, are on, and you're getting people moving and gathering together, uh, which we will do again. 
which yeah. we will do again. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and uh, it's amazing that, that this is so much a part of people's blood and fiber that they would do it live stream and on, on air. And, and, and there we go. Here we're on to a whole new, a whole new life uh, where this is uh, at your disposal 24-7, wherever you are, to as many people as you ha have. Uh, yeah. You know, That's great. Uh, at, at some point, uh, we're going to take a drive from um, from Utah to New York, and uh, we have a little place on the beach. And I can really see myself, uh, um, you know, putting some speakers on the back of my truck and having people not six feet, but well, way apart, you know, but still <laughs> on the beach, having fun, dancing. I don't know. We'll see if I can make that happen. I love it. That's a great vision. That's a great vision to wrap up on. And uh, before we close, because this will probably go out as a podcast, um, I just want to underline a couple of things. So you guys send out a great newsletter and you highlight a different teacher each month. People can get on that. What? Just five rhythms.com, right? Is there any other platforms you want to mention or, um, you know, any, anything else you want to highlight here at the end? Yeah. Uh, our website at five rhythms.com is, is, has everything, but I certainly want to highlight, um, live at five rhythms.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which would be, the live streaming classes, right? And to me, uh, has the highest sound quality of anything that you could get out there. And you also receive teachings, not just uh, from me, but from multiple teachers uh, mm -hmm. from around the world, and, which I'm really excited about. And yeah, um, you can bring your family together in that way. Or you can do a solo practice. Uh, um, and that, yeah, that's it. Well, great, man. It's been so nice to talk to you. I mean, it's a pleasure to see you face to face and, uh, to see uh, Morgan and, uh, Levi, the dog. And, uh, I, uh, you know, <laughs> great to see you here in, uh, you know, Salt Lake city to Berkeley, California. And, uh, just, just keep it live, man. I really appreciate it. Keep, keep, keep Absolutely. on keeping on, keep doing the good work. Keep carrying the torch man. this is great. But we'll, we'll keep it live. You keep it real. <laughs> All right, Jonathan. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.